Er ist die aktuelle Nummer 37 der Welt, hat in seiner Karriere schon sieben PDC-Titel eingefahren, hat in seinem Leben sieben Kinder gezeugt. Und das Verrückte ist, der Mann ist auf dem rechten Auge blind und das in diesem Präzisionssport Darts. Interessanter Typ. Herzlich willkommen, Java, Jamie Caven. Jamie Caven tritt an gegen die Entdeckung dieses Jahres 2017. Der Kerl hat erst seit diesem Jahr die Tourcard für die großen PDC-Turniere und er hat sage und schreibe schon vier Turniere in diesem Jahr gewinnen können. Er gehört inzwischen zu den Top 32 der Welt. Herzlich willkommen, The Voltage, Rob Cross. Dieses Matches ist der Mann, der das World Grand Prix Finale zuletzt gecallt hat. Der Calculator, Kirk Bevins. Well, it's got to the stage now where we're running out of superlatives to describe Rob Cross. I think we're running out of platitudes here as well because he just continues to impress, he continues to shine and he continues to give us all reminders about what a class act he is. Rob Cross claiming his fourth PDC Pro Tour title of the year with that 6-3 win over Adrian Lewis in the final of Tuesday's Players' Championship 21 in Barnsley, having claimed Players' Championship 19 in Dublin with that win over Peter Wright. And the former electrician known as Voltage now tops the Players' Championship order of merits going into the Players' Championship finals in Minehead at the end of November. Seeded six here. He's actually up to number four on the Pro Tour order of merits. He's inside the world's top 32 as well. And this transition he has made from Challenge Tour to the full circuit has just been simply one of the stories of 2017. It really has. He's already made one final on the European Tour this year as well. He went all the way nearly at the German Darts Grand Prix, where he lost to Michael Van Gerwen 6-3 in the final. And it's and gentlemen, just leg the story that the keeps on, game on delivering a new chapter. And you just wonder whether there's going to be another chapter this weekend as well, Paul Nicholson. Certainly Jamie Caven, despite all the success he's had in getting or trying to get his career back on track, I mean, that's all well and good, but this could be a very, very tall order for him. It could well be. I've been coming and aring about the whole is this the best debut season ever in the PDC? 140. And I've been racking my brains, but I'll tell you what, after winning another title this week, I have to say it probably is. I know he hasn't gone deep in a major yet. I know he had an early exit at the Grand Prix, and he, he said to me at the airport in Dublin the very next morning that he just couldn't get a rhythm 29. going in a double start match I'm sure that's something he will no doubt get better at with experience but just look at the majors coming up what's going to suit him the best 108 mm -hmm. I think the players championship suits him at Minehead he likes Minehead he's played well there before we know he plays well in the UK Open just get the feeling that he might have some sort of Great run at the Worlds. Yeah. He's certainly capable. Yeah, you look at it on the face of it. You know, there's not a lot between them as far as the Fifth order exactly. of merit is concerned. Jamie Caven only a few places below him right now, but you could argue there's a bit of a gulf in class between them. But then again, you know, Caven, one of these uh, Renaissance Probably men Obama, in darts at the moment, he needed to reach the semi finals of the final Players' Championship event of the year to force his way into the reckoning for Minehead. And he did precisely that. And you never know, that could give him a massive shot in the arm. 90. And let's not lose sight of the fact that Jamie Caven is still a very talented player. And he's looking at 1 1 1. Make that 91. Well, he's not going to finish off now. 79. Well, Jamie leaves the double that Rob Cross requires. So it's a battle of the double 16s. You don't expect Rob Cross to miss. 
and he doesn't. That's a picture perfect double 16 in anybody's language. And there is Rob Cross's manager, John Archer. What a find, John. What a find. Yes, he's unearthed a gem there, hasn't he? 60. Went to the coal face looking for the black stuff and ended up coming up with a diamond, really. Jamie Cave in a 3 to 1 outsider with the bookies for this match at the start of play. Rob Cross, an overwhelming 4 to 1 on favour. 81. But uh, Jamie Cave in a man who has gone close to winning a European Tour event. It was some time ago, it was three years ago, in fact, when he lost 6 5 to Van der Voort in the 55. final in Austria. So he's, you know, been there and done that before. Rob Cross has also made a final this year as well, as I said. Got a really good story for you about Rob Cross. Rob, friend of mine by the name of James Stevenson, who lives down on the south coast near Little Hampton in West Sussex, called me up a couple of years ago. And 58. it was after uh, Rob Cross had a decent run as an amateur at the UK Open. He said, I'm going to look after this guy in the Challenge Tour. What do you think? I said, Yeah, I think it's a pretty good shout that actually. I, I don't know how good he is, really. I don't 81. know the lad. After that, Rob Cross just started coming up on everybody's radar after that. Yeah. So we could actually blame my friend James mm -hmm. instead of John Archer for what has gone since then. 69. Just to put into context, people like myself, you know, I've been a pro nearly 10 years. I've won four players' championship titles. He's won the same amount of players' championship titles as I have in his first year. Mm. Jamie's won seven in his career. A career that's about the same amount of time as me in the PDC. He's more than halfway up to Jamie. <laughs> he has made giant strides in a very short space of time. Another illustration of that as well. Uh, Paul, 90. Jamie is the fact that he only made his Euro Tour debut six months ago. Or just over six months ago, I should say. And when he first came on to the European circuit, it was like duck to water. Robbie Uruguay, 54. One of only three players to have beaten Michael Van Gerwen on the European Tour stage this year. That was in the last 16 in Leverkusen. So he's got that under his belt as well. Well, he didn't like that dart. It wasn't close to double 18. 45. And there is the danger. He splits 60. nines as well. Gives Jamie a chance. A chance that he probably didn't expect to get. Now, that dart was slightly awkward for Tops. The single was in the way. There's nothing in the way of double ten. Shot the second leg. Apart Jamie from came. the dart the legs that pierces it and takes the leg. One other thing I have to say about Jamie Caven as well, in that, in that run that he had the other day, when he forced his way into the Players' Championship Finals, he beat Adrian Lewis in the Eight. last 16. He beat John Henderson in the quarter-finals, given everything that Henderson did in Dublin as well recently, and then he had that defeat by James Wilson. I think not one single player from inside the world's top 32 Safety. made the semi-finals. So people will say, well, OK, you know, it was a weak lineup, but you, when you break it all down, anything but, really. Yeah, that's... Uh, it, it was all done earlier on, you know, the, 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 road, the pathway there was very, very 85. rough and rocky indeed. I'm a big believer in people who know the game in and out will say that that was still a very strong last four. Absolutely. It was just proof of the strength and depth of the PDC Pro Tour right now. It's never been stronger. And I know that we've been harping on for the last few years on TV programmes and in interviews about how the standard's getting better. Well, well it is. The proof's in the pool. And I think that's backed up by the figures that the players are producing on a weekly basis. And those figures aren't bad either for Jamie Caven. Good to have Jamie Caven back on the European Tour stage. He only played one European Tour event this year. But uh, 26. certainly Jamie a man who's made a great 61. contribution on the European stage over the last two or three years. 101, that was a single one, yep. Yeah. So treble 17. Would have left the bullseye. 44. Robbie McGuire, 170. Can Rob Cross do what James Richardson did yesterday? When James Richardson did it, his opponent wasn't on a finish. And he can't do it. 
And Jamie Caven tried to leave something a bit Jamie lower than this with the last dart of his last visit. It's slightly tricky now because he can only hit 18 and tops. Game shot and he's got it. Leg. Jamie Caven. Fourth leg is Jamie to throw first. Break a throw for Jamie Caven. Is he going to upset fantastically for Rob Cross, who will be number one seed at Minehead, and is almost upsetting that party for MBG and, Matt, and Peter Wright, who have been taking the number one seedings all season. Yeah, Michael Van Gerwen seeded sixth at uh, Minehead, which 84. of course has huge ramifications for the man alongside me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Jamie Caven, I think his run put me down into the spot that corresponded with Michael Van Gerwen. So at Minehead, 57. It will be me and Michael Van Gerwen having a, a dust up on the stage. Well, you've beaten him before. I have, but that was a long time ago. But I've got plenty of time to prepare over a month to get my game together. And 108! Who knows what can happen? Well, maybe Jamie Caven's just woken up Rob Cross a little bit because in this leg he's turned up. 47. I believe you've got a little bit of news about the venue, Rob? Yes, um, just about the figures. We were hoping or expecting, I think, maybe to have a record crowd for a German European tour event. It's just shy of the uh, previous record. 3,496, though, still a very, very good turnout. And Robbie who knows, I think 97. tomorrow it may be even higher. I'm not quite sure. I, I, I believe the capacity is 3,750 or so. Anyway, Rob Cross. Game shot on the fourth leg. Playing Rob against the backdrop of a big crowd. Fifth leg is Rob to throw first. Against that backdrop, he is back on terms at two apiece. Yeah, good response from Voltage. Someone who has chosen to keep his Rocky Four soundtrack walk on. I think 140. He didn't warm to the other one. No. The uh, danger, danger, high voltage. Sometimes when you're doing things right, like he is right now, 95. it's important not to change much. Well, he had that in Maastricht, didn't he? The danger, danger, high voltage, and he only got the. Uh, well, he only made it to the third round there. So perhaps he thought, well, do you know what? It's a bad omen. I'm going to start again. And then the next tournament made it all the way to the final in Mannheim, didn't it? It's a good song, that one from Rocky IV, Burning Heart by Survivor. I agree, Rob. Keep that one. All of the songs from Rocky IV are good. I know that Wes Newton, he's a big fan of Rocky IV. I often wonder what Survivor would have done without the Rocky, the Rocky soundtrack. You know, how, how would their careers have panned out? Would they have made their millions any other way? Probably not, but I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure they're not bothered about that. There's the 174. Yeah, not quite making millions, but he's uh, making headway here. In fact, just one last 16 appearance on the Pro Tour this year prior to Jamie Rick, 132. that run last weekend, or last week. He was looking for a bullseye or a 25. That would have given him options. That option would have been trouble 19 or another bull. 46. But now Rob Cross can take the initiative 68. back on his throw. 68. Trouble 20. Yeah, or double yes. four. And then we have the trademark. Stop and yeah, think about it from leg. Rob Cross. Rob Rob. Six leg is double Jamie four first. is taken out for a 3-2 lead. He's got two on the spin here. But it's nip and tuck this one. Yeah, Jamie's given as good as he's getting. But that little pause 93. on the double, I, I like it. It's become a characteristic. Like you just said, Rob, we've watched him a lot this season. And I liken it to watching Jim Furyk put, and he tends to step back a bit. Well, that's the equivalent of a 300-yard drive, that shot. But when he steps back, he just composes himself just for those extra couple of seconds. 140. Oh, boys at work this year. Yeah, and we talked about the value of doing that yesterday. I mean, in the Ricky Evans match, I think I made the point whereby would it be worthwhile just stopping momentarily or just for an extra half second just to try and 97. get some composure. Rob Cross certainly does that. And well, he's not been able to back it up with too much, but 
He's still potentially in good shape here for another break of throw, especially with that particular visit from Jamie Caven. Jamie made the second round of this tournament last year, lost to Chizzy 6-5, missing out agonisingly for a place in the last 16. Yeah, Jamie's crew at home will be watching. Proud of his achievements this week, but they'll want him to win this match. Debbie's wife, 140. Gaz and Alex, people that I know very well, they really do support him brilliantly in his ventures. Yeah. Trouble 18 for Rob. Bullseye for 4-2. Oh, that was close. 99. It moved the bullseye. Jamie, 70. Jamie shouldn't need the bullseye in this combo. A 12 or a 20. Take your pick. It's the 20. Double 16. Yeah, oh, yeah. You've got to Jamie think Kane. that confidence this the week has helped him hit that shot. And there's a bit of aggression, which again has reared its head this week. Does he want to keep playing darts at the highest level? You bet he does. 58. Yeah, he looks to be full of self-belief at times today, Jamie Cave. And I think that does all stem from that uh, massive victory for him. 100. It's a a career-defining win for him, you feel. And who knows what he goes on to achieve now as a result of that. If he goes to Minehead, has a good run there as well. It could make all the difference for him. 59. The quality of Jamie Caven's throwing has never been in question, but 60. it's that thing in between the ears that can get you sometimes. And earlier this year, I looked at Jamie across the room and places like Barnsley, Milton Keynes, and he just didn't look like himself. And you have to go on a journey of self-discovery sometimes to find out what you were doing right when things were great and how you got yourself into this mess. And it takes an incredible human being to be able to look yourself in the mirror and say, you know what, I've just got to start again. And that's what he's done. He's put in so much hard work. I've looked at his social media feeds. He's constantly practicing. And that is his little church. 60. He's put in so many hours. And it's starting to work. Well, Jamie Caven's stolen the darts here. Do with the treble just to embellish the cushion, the small cushion that he has. 47. And he's not really been able to do that there. And that's a shame. Then again, Rob Cross. Just labouring in this leg in particular, but... 81. He too is still not down to a finish. And it's still slightly, ever so slightly, advantage Caven in this one as well. So maybe an opportunity for Caven to break again here. Good first dart. Good second dart as well. 78 away. 138. Yeah, Rob Cross needs a maximum. Just get the feeling that maybe a bit of experience of crazy October darts Jamie is 60. helping Jamie Caven. He's been through the minefield of busy times on the PDC circuit and he's used to this Rob is not that's hey, a really John good Seven shot from there. Jamie he's in front Jamie came. and in hey, previous Lincoln, seasons we've had things like hey, championship on. league in the middle of the week we've had pro tours visits to Killarney in Dublin Benidorm Germany all in the same month and when you've been through that before you can ready yourself for busy times like this Rob nice Price has never ever been through a crazy October in the PDC yet and maybe He's just getting used to playing so many games in a row. 140. Well, Jamie Caven, I'm pretty sure, would have been well aware of the implications of a victory here. Not only a place in the last 16, but a meeting with another qualifier in the shape of Keegan Brown, the 96. reward and offer as well. Now, given the way that Keegan Brown played earlier today against Van der Pass, you know, it's still a very difficult assignment for whoever comes through this, but Jamie Caven you know, would have looked at that and thought, well, there Ooh, is another opportunity. Then. Big hurdle to get through here, but if he can get through this, it might just begin to open up for him, and who knows what might lie in store tomorrow. Tell you one thing, Rob, I wouldn't want to play Keegan right now. No. He has got his tail up, and he is... I've never seen him so confident. I really haven't. But if he'd said to Jamie Caven at the start of the weekend, there's a good prospect of playing a qualifier in round three, it would have snapped your hand off, so... Yeah, we... We don't really look at, you know, 
favourable draws anymore, but, but to actually go on your side there, 16. Rob, it's sort of better than yeah. clearing other people. But like you say, though, given the strength and depth of the PDC of and, and, and of tournaments like this, you know, there, there are no gimmies, absolutely. Game shot on the eighth leg, Rob Cross. And, well, break back Ninth leg straight is away for Rob first. Cross. It's ebbing and flowing, isn't it? One way to the Aim other. On. Caven, 2-1 in front. Cross responding, 3-2 in front. Caven seizing the initiative, going 4-3 in front. Cross breaking back for all. What we're witnessing in the last 90 seconds or so is just why Rob Cross has won so many matches this year. 177, 168, out, 180. He's just very good. He has the ability to get those darts very close together. Even more so now with the new darts that he's been utilizing for the last six weeks because they're all the same weight. The previous ones had a differential of about two grams, which in darting terms is like using a putter as a three wood. Echoes of the Ian White match here as well against uh, Van der Voort because Rob Cross, he's averaging 103, he's hitting 50% of his doubles, and yet he's still level at 80. four all. Jamie Caven is only averaging 89, and yet he's still very much involved in this match, although he might not be involved in this leg for too much longer. He needs to find something here, and he's certainly doing that with three big scores there. Robbie Aguilar, 141. Still not down to a finish, though. Rob Cross won't mind that. That'll just keep him... Hang on a minute. Treble 16, it would have been... That would have left him 36. Slightly unconventional. 117. Gets him to a double. And Jamie can't go out. I love that. He, he didn't panic. Jamie puts in the big score and he just does his own thing, sets up the double, knows he's coming back. 42. Now all he got to do is execute. 24. Three darts at double 12 then for Cross. Caven waiting to pounce on 130. They are equidistant from the bed. No and score. That one was a little bit closer, but Even no score. 130. And Caven has a bit of a lifeline here, but Cross will be hopeful of returning. Only one way to go here, Jamie. And it's not going to be. Well, Rob's sights are off on double 12 there. He'll be disgusted with all three darts. 41. But he's got another opportunity. He's got a chance to fix it. He must have been about two centimeters away on the last three shots. Yeah, That's not far away though. Well, he used, he used those first three darts very well, didn't he? He had those in the back of his mind when he went up there and takes out double 12. But you know, Caven's still alive. It's still going on throw effectively here. Needs to hold here, obviously. 84. Jamie's very popular in Germany. He does a lot of exhibition work over here. Somewhere where exhibitions are becoming more popular. Fans like to get close to the players and 32. see how they are as good as they are. I'm sure that's something Rob Cross will do in his future, but Jamie's a very personable guy and gets on very well with the German public. 123. And I've noticed in this match that Everybody's sitting down and is enthralled by it. Usually on a Saturday night, it's Six. up, jumping, singing, but this is a darting purist's crowd. Maybe, maybe though, they're just preserving their energy for what 81. is in store because we have the small matter of Martin Schindler, sole surviving German host nation qualifier, on the way next. And he has the small matter of an encounter with. The most popular player in Germany to come as well. Peter Wright, number two seed, number one on the Pro Tour order of merits. Fifth. Yeah, he's got his own song as well. Du hast die Haare schön. You have the beautiful hair. Well, maybe they're saving that song for the next one because they can't sing it in this one. It's pretty much irrelevant here, yeah. They could say you have a beautiful head. Jamie Rickwell, 158. <laughs> Jamie Kevin, though. Six starts from 158 will take him to a last leg decider. Well, it would have taken him to a different level had he taken out 158 there. We had a 156 earlier on today. But Caven, nevertheless, in pole position here. 
85. I just get the feeling that Rob has just let this leg go a little bit. He's getting ready for leg 11. The all important the leg 11. Leg 11. And the final we are leg is into Rob a first. decider. Game on. What price Rob Cross here starting off with at least two trebles. There's one. There's two. Bet landed. There's one three. Has this guy got bottle or one? That must be a real sickener for Jamie Cave, and he just looked on from the back of the stage there almost. When that second dart went in, he just looked resigned to the fact that there was going to be a third. 91. 180 plays, 91. Advantage cross here. It's not just a good player, Rob Cross. He knows how to win. He knows when to play and when to put in big scores as well. He seems to have this innate ability to come up with the required product when he needs it. It's like an online shopping service. Whenever you need it, all you've got to do is type in what you want, and it's right there. Well, that's just kept Jamie Caven interested here. But this will keep Rob Cross interested now. 105. Very sensible stuff from the Sussex man. Needs a 60, Jamie Caven, and a prayer. Yeah, that will get him down to a well, the biggest finish of the loss, 60. and he can't find it. 160. And so he's dropped short, and Rob Cross, 96 away, finds it. Double 18 for a place in round Game three, and, match, Rob and Rob Cross's adventure continues. And a nice embrace between the two at the end of that one as well. And Jamie Caven with a little bit of a renaissance in his career, almost, almost causing Rob Cross problems there. But ultimately, Rob Cross with the advantage of throwing first in that final leg, getting off to a flyer. And having overcome that particular hurdle, who knows, he may well kick on from here. A tough assignment lies in store tomorrow against Keegan Brown. Jamie Caven bids farewell to the European Tour for 2017. I hope we see a lot more of him on the stage in Europe in 2018. I'm sure we'll see a lot more of Rob Cross and we'll see a lot more of Rob Cross this weekend as well. He will be involved in the third round tomorrow. I will grab a quick word with Rob and then fasten your seatbelts for the next match of the evening session here. Martin Schindler, sole surviving host nation qualifier against Peter Snakebite Wright. That's on the way. We have the, this, the deciding leg, and you start with the 180, you check 116. I mean, this is confidence, and this is just good. It's, I don't know, tonight it was very stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. And um, when, when I feel like I had to hit a big leg, I hit a big leg every time I went behind. Um, but just not my normal self through, throughout the game to, to pressurise every single leg, really. Um, but fair play to Jamie, he's a cracking guy and a cracking player. But, um, yeah, just, it was weird. It was, it was so up and down. Four tournament wins now in 2017. Did you ever expect in the beginning of the year that something like this could happen? No, definitely not. Um, I've come in with expectations to make a top 64 in the world, and um, now I'm sitting at 32, so that, that changed. But um, no, really, um, sort of to what I've done is great. I need to get my head down, and I need to keep doing what I'm doing to keep myself better to get where I want to get. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Rob Cross, ganz bescheidener Typ. Trotz dieses tollen Jahres 2017 und seinen vier Turniersiegen.